Welcome back guys. Sorry it's been a little bit of a delay since my last video on this Raspberry Pi uh, reef controller project, but um, yeah, I'm still working on it. And today we're going to, well, we'll be talking about or doing a little tutorial on how to measure the water temperature, or basically any temperature for that matter, uh, with one of these DS18B20 temperature probes. And I'll show you, you know, how to hook that up and how to pull the data off of it. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to use that to measure any of the temperatures that we want to. And the cool thing about that probe is that uh, you could basically hook as many of them up as you want in parallel. And it will only use the same amount of um, data ports on the Raspberry Pi. So um, I've got mine wired up, I could potentially add three of them in here, uh, but today we're going to show you how to do just one, keep it simple, and uh, yeah, so let's get into that, but before we do that, um, focus that, so I kind of wanted to just uh, give a little shout out to Johan M, and I think, uh, you know, when I put out these videos, these tutorials, if I come across any pretty cool DIY projects that are in line with what we're doing here, I'm going to try and you know, focus on them and, you know, spread the love. So, uh, Johan's got this really cool project going on where he's uh, modifying these LED lights to be more suitable for the reef aquariums. I think these were some grow lights, and he's pulling out the uh, red LEDs. He's going to replace them with some blue ones. It's Wi-Fi uh, capable. It's a really cool project. Um, can't wait to see you know, what he comes up with, with this, but, um, yeah, you can see he's at 39 subscribers now. So let's, uh, everybody head over there, hit that subscribe button for him and, uh, show him some support. And then one other thing I wanted to mention, um, which today on reef builders, I saw this new article about the vertex cerebra or well, the cerebra two. So a little while ago, they came out with a new aquarium controller. Um, they were testing it. And then we haven't heard from them in a while. And it looks like, you know, they're back. And they've got this new aquarium controller coming out. But the thing that really caught my attention is they went back to the drawing board. And you can see it's now based on the Raspberry Pi, which is exactly what we're using. So I thought that was pretty cool. So... If it's good enough for them, uh, it's good enough for us, and we must be on the right track. So, be really interesting to see how this thing uh, comes along. But um, yeah, anything that they're doing with this, there's really no reason why we can't do the same thing. I mean, we're using a Raspberry Pi as well, so I'll be keeping my eyes on that. And I thought that was pretty cool. So, all right, enough of that. We're going to get into uh, the temperature sensor. All right, so the DS18. B20 temperature sensor is actually pretty easy uh, to wire up. There's not much to it. Um, you're going to need, obviously, the sensor itself. And these are pretty inexpensive. You can get these on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Um, I think I got five of them for about 12 bucks. So pretty inexpensive. Um, this is the, obviously, the waterproof or submersible version. Um, and the one I got has a three foot or one meter lead on it. I think that they do have ones with longer leads. Um, so you may want to get one with a longer lead. So pay attention to how long the wire is on it. Uh, I ended up extending mine, you know, just putting extension cables on it. But uh, yeah, it's just going to need the temperature probe itself. You're going to need a resistor. I think you could use either a 4.7 kilo ohm up to a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And I've got a 10K uh, resistor right here. So you need one of them. Um, obviously, I've got my breadboard some jumper cables and the Raspberry Pi, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this in. There's only three wires here. So you've got, you know, the red one is voltage, so it's going to be 3.3 .3 volts DC. Um, you got your ground wire right there, and then you got your signal wire, or your data wire right there, the yellow one. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. I don't have my tripod down here, so I'm going to put the camera down for a second. Um, I'm just going to put these three wires into the breadboard and then make the connections. All right, so I got the three wires plugged into the breadboard. I'm just going to need to make a couple of um, connections here. So I'm just going to plug the uh, red wire, which is the 3.3 .3 volts, into the Raspberry Pi. 
3.3 volt, which is up there. And then we need to plug a ground pin in. That's the black wire. And we're going to put that into a ground pin on the Pi. Which is... Sorry, I'm going to take a closer look. Get in there. There we go. Is it in? Yep, that's in the ground. All right. And then we need to hook the data wire, which is the yellow one. And we're going to plug this into GPIO4, which is up here. Okay, so we got three wires connected uh, from the sensor to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but we also need to use this resistor. And what this resistor is going to do is, or is basically um, connect the 3.3 volts to the signal wire. So we're just going to connect that between the red wire and the yellow wire. And that's basically it for the uh, wiring. So we just have... Uh, this resistor jumping between 3.3 volts and signal. We've got um, the 3.3 volts going to 3.3 volts on the Pi, uh, ground going to ground on the Pi, and the yellow signal wire, we're using GPIO number four on the Pi. And now we can turn over to the computer and I'll show you how to configure the Raspberry Pi uh, to accept the data from the sensor and we'll get into a little bit of Python and show you how easy it is to pull the data off. All right, so the first thing we need to do is configure the Raspberry Pi to use something called one-wire communication. That is the protocol that is used to pass the data from the temperature sensor over to the Raspberry Pi. So what we need to do is go up to Menu, go down to Preferences, and we need to go into the Raspberry Pi configuration. Once this is open, we want to click on the Interfaces button or tab, and then you'll see down here one wire. You want to make sure that you click Enable on there and then hit OK. Um, if you were disabled and you hit or just enabled it, um, it'll probably tell you to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and do that now. And once that's set up, uh, we're ready to pull some data off of this thing. And the nice thing about this is if you've got this thing wired up properly, and once you enable uh, the one wire, um, it's basically collecting data right now without us even having to do anything. So what we're going to want to do is go into the file manager and we're going to want to look um, in a certain directory and basically the temperature probe is outputting the data to a file. We want to just verify right now that that file exists and I'll show you the data that's in there and then we're going to write a little program that's going to uh, read that file and display it on screen for us. Uh, so we want to come up to the root uh, directory, and then here we're going to find sys, go into there, then we want to go into bus, and then once we get into bus, you want to go to w1. You get into w1, you want to go into devices, and we're going to see some things in here. What you're looking for is something uh, that starts with 28. It's going to be 28 dash something. Um, every one of these temperature sensors, these... Um, DS18B20 temperature sensors has a serial number uh, attached to it and they all start with 28 dash something. Um, so we just have one probe hooked up right now so we only see one here and it'll be very easy to uh, find this file and read it. Uh, but if we had multiple sensors hooked up there would be uh, several of these directories called 28 dash something. But since we have one we just can just look into this one for now. So if I go into here, there's some more files. We're not going to worry about any of them. Um, the one we're going to be concerned with is this one called W1Slave. Uh, this is where the data uh, from the probe is actually being written. So if I were to look inside of this file, it's just a text file, um, you see two lines of data in here. Um, don't be concerned with anything that's in here other than uh, the last thing on this first line, which is either going to be yes or no. We, we're, we want to see something called, or we want it to say yes. Um, that means that it pulled data off of the probe with no problem, um, and it checked out, so it puts a yes into this file. 
And then down here on the second line, uh, what we're concerned with is this value right here, T equals. Um, this number right here is actually the temperature that's pulled off of the probe. Uh, it's pulling everything off in uh, degrees Celsius. So right now it's reading 23.062 degrees Celsius. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is writing a program that comes into this file, reads these things, um, and gives us the data. All right, so we're going to write our program in Python 3, just like before. Uh, so in order to start, we're just going to go up to Menu, Programming, and we're going to open up Python 3 idle. And that will open up a new shell window. We're going to go to File, New File. And we've got a blank editor where we can start typing in our code. So just like before, we're going to import some libraries. Um, we're going to need all of these for the rest of the code that we'll be doing. So we're going to import OS module. We will import the glob module, which allows us to uh, work with some file paths and directories. It makes it easy for us. We'll import the time module. And then we need to put a couple of lines in here to basically uh, let the system know that we're going to be working um, with these modules uh, and you need to have these here for this to work properly. So we're going to do os.system mod probe w1-gpio. Okay, then we need to do os. Probe W1 dash term. Okay, don't worry too much about what this is, um, what's happening behind the scenes, but just know that you need to put them in there to do what we want to do. So next we're going to do baster equals this way, yes. System bus. We're basically right now just um, defining a variable to point to the location where that 28 dash uh, file structure was. Uh, so sysbus, yep, that's correct. And then we're going to put device folder equals, and this is where we're going to use this glob functionality. All right, so what we just did there, um, so we're based there, we just typed it in. We know we're going to start looking in this area. What we need to, what we want to do is find um, the folder name. Like we said before, uh, that folder name is going to change every time we put a different probe on there because it is uh, keyed to the actual probe itself. And so right now, we need to know what this um, directory is called. And we're gonna just do some little uh, code here so we don't have to type this in. We could just type this in directly, uh, but I wanna make this so that, you know, we don't need to know what that file name is ahead of time. If we're only gonna have one probe, this will work. If we decide to add multiple probes, uh, we're gonna need to modify this to handle that. But right now this will work for just one uh, temperature probe hooked up. Oh, and, and then what this is saying is basically um, it's going to the base directory and looking for all files that start with 28. And it would return an array of data of all the different file names that it found. Uh, we only have one, and we're asking it to return back the first item that it found. Uh, since we have only one, uh, that's going to be always the one that we're looking for. And then we want to know what the device file equals uh, slash w1 and I think that's 
right? Yep. All right, so then finally, it's just going to go down here. So basically, we're going to um, end up with a path uh, to this exact file right here without having to know ahead of time what the serial number of the device was. Uh, so once we have that defined, uh, we're going to put a couple little functions here. So we're just going to do def uh, read temp raw. And what this is going to do is go, like I said, this is just a file that has two lines in it. Um, and we're going to go ahead and read those lines to pull the data that we want off of it. So we're going to come into here and basically read these lines of data to get the temperature out. All right, so F. And we're just going to do some uh, file system calls here. And tell them that we want to read this file. And then and we're going to go ahead and just read all of the lines that are in the file. Um, close out this file. We're done with it. And then we will return what we just read out of there. So this function basically goes to the file and it's going to pull out those two lines out of it and return them back to the caller. And then we will just and then we're going to just add another function for read temperature. And then we're going to say lines. Three does not equal yes. And then basically what we're going to do is uh, read the first line of the file. So we're lines is going to call read temp raw. And it's going to pull return back the two lines. We're going to read the first line. Um, and we're basically just verifying uh, that it's going to be yes at the end. I said we needed to wait for it to be yes in order to get a valid temperature. Uh, so if it's not yes, we're going to uh, try it again. So we'll give it a yeah, 0 0.2 second wait time to try it again uh, if it had returned no or something other than yes. Um, and then... Oh, what do we need to do? And then lines equals, so we'll try and read it again. Okay. So yeah, so if it doesn't return yes, go ahead, wait 0.2 seconds and then try it again. Then what we need to do is once we do have yes, um, we are going to... This one and all right, so what we're doing here um, is basically you know once we found out that we had yes on the first line uh, we're going to go ahead and read the second line and what we're looking for is uh, this string right here t equals so we're going to find that in the second line and just basically get the position um, of those characters in there uh, if it doesn't find t equals, it's going to return minus 1. Um, so we're just saying here, as long as this does not equal uh, minus 1, we're going to go ahead and continue down here. Uh, so then we'll say temp string equals lines.
Uh, so we go to the equal position plus two. We're going to jump over two values um, from where we found that. And then we're just going to pull out our temperature. And this is going to be a decimal, so we're going to call it a float. And then we're going to temp. We pulled out the data as a string, and we're going to convert it over to a float. Floating point number. So, and then we have to divide it by 1,000 because um, we saw how it was formatted in there. We need to divide by 1,000 so we actually get, get the actual uh, temperature. And then, so that will give us back uh, that. And then just for fun, why don't we convert this to Fahrenheit? So we'll have to do temp C. And then times 9.0 divided by 5.0. I'm just doing a basic conversion um, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And I think we've got everything. And then let's just return temp C, temp F. And then so that's this function. So this is going to go in, read those lines. Um, if everything looks good, it's going to return back uh, both the temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And now we just need to um, have our application actually display it for us. So we'll just do a little loop uh, and we'll just print out the temperature for us. And then we'll wait a second and do it again. And if everything works okay, this should run. So let's save this. So I will save this and we will call this temp probe. Save it and let's run it, see if this works. We got a problem somewhere. All right, so I see where the problem was. Uh, there's actually a couple of problems here, but I had an extra space there. Let's pull that back. And let's put these in the right spot. And I also noticed that I was missing a colon right there. So I'm going to put that there. Save this and go ahead and run. And as we'll see over here, we're actually pulling the data off of the temperature probe. And if I were to pick this probe up, hold it in my hand, we'll see the temperature will start to rise as the probe heats up. And then if I were to let it go, uh, it'll eventually start to lose the heat and we'll start to uh, the temperature will start to go down. So this is um, you know, pretty straightforward, I think, on how to pull the data off of this thing. Uh, but of course, you'll probably want to use these um, a little bit more usable of a format. So let me just add a couple of lines to our code here so that we could... Because you're probably going to use uh, display this in either Fahrenheit or Celsius. You probably won't be doing it uh, both at the same time. So what we could do is maybe just add a little bit to this. I'm going to add a, um, an input for scale. And then we can say down here before we return anything. Uh, let's say if scale equals say f. And let's return. We're going to go ahead and format this number a little bit nicer um, because I don't like all of those decimal places. We really only need to show one decimal place. Uh, so let's just format the data that we get back. Uh, that should bring it to one decimal place. And then 
and see if we want it in Celsius, we'll do the same thing. And then if we still want it to display it the way we did, we can just return. Oh, we've already got it there. And let's say we want to read it in Fahrenheit. We'll just put F into there. Let's save that. Run. And of course we forgot colon. And what did I do wrong? Oh, there we go. Forgot to put that into there. Okay, there we go. So we're now reading it just in degrees Fahrenheit right now. And again, if I were to hold on to the probe, it will start to increase and let go and it'll eventually start to go down. And then if I want it to go in Celsius, just as simple as switching that to C. And we're now reading it in Celsius. So, um, yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to show on this one. It probably went a little bit longer than necessary. Maybe I'll you know, try and speed up <laughs> some of the typing in the code on the next time. Um, or maybe I'll just copy and paste it so you don't have to sit through all of that. And then make sure everything's working uh, ahead of time so I don't have to sit down and try and debug it as well. Um, but, yeah, let me know uh, what you guys think. Um, if there's anything else you want to know about this, uh, see if I can answer the questions, just leave them below. And uh, yeah, so look forward to uh, reading your guys' comments. If you're interested in this project, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.